<laughs> Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on particles, paint strokes, and replicators inside motion. I am delighted you're here. We've got some really interesting effects to show you, and I can't wait to get started. So, <laughs> let's start. There's two ways that I can teach effects. One is I can show you how to create a finished piece, or I can show you how to create the elements that go into a finished piece. The benefit to a finished piece is you have a piece of art to look at when we're done, but the benefit to looking at the components, it's easier to understand how they work and how to make changes to them. So today we're going to take the approach of looking at some specific elements that then get integrated into a more complete motion graphic. The goals for this session are to show you how we can create interesting, intricate effects by starting simply and allowing the tools within motion to expand it into something fascinating. And along the way, we'll look at particle systems and what we can do with them, animating paint strokes, and some amazing things to do with replicators. Now here's some examples of what we'll be creating today. We'll start with a very simple particle system. In this case, it could be smoke coming from a chimney. Or we'll combine text with a particle system or create a more complex particle system, in this case, confetti falling from the sky. A simple write-on paint stroke, which will prove conclusively beyond a shadow of a doubt that I cannot draw a straight line. <laughs> and then we'll take it and make it a more complex paint stroke and add behaviors to it. We'll create a simple background using a replicator that we could use for an infographic. And then we'll have some fun with replicators, 3D, and a camera. There's a lot to talk about, and we're going to get started by exploring the particle emitters in the library. I've started Motion, and whenever you want to create a new project inside Motion, you go up to File and Create New. Now, the way I've defined my presets is that I am always creating the same form. Because the work that I do in real life principally is HD, normally I have my presets set to an HD setting. But for this webinar, because I'm working with smaller screens, I've set it to a standard 4x3 NTSC shape. Everything that I show you today works in Motion 3 and Motion 4. It works on NTSC and PAL and high def. I'm just working with small screen sizes because I don't have a lot of real estate to spare on these webinars. Once you have your project set, if you need to change the project properties or you want to find out what video format this is configured for, go up to the Edit menu, go down to Project Properties, and you'll see that we've got it configured for NTSC DV, which is a 72480 image. You could select PAL if you're from outside NTSC territory, or HD. All of these are determined from the Project Properties setting. And the rest of the settings are the default and they're perfectly OK. And we'll click OK. By the way, if you need an introduction to how motion works, I strongly recommend you take a look at webinar 18, which introduces the whole interface and how to work with it, because I'm going to assume a lot about how the interface works in this webinar. And the other thing that maybe you need some refresher on is working in 3D space. And there, webinar 21, the introduction to 3D space, can explain a lot of what I'm taking for granted here. So this is more of an intermediate than a beginning course. Having said that, let's take a look at the particle library. We move over to the utility window and there's three tabs, the file browser which allows us to find files, the library which is where all the content is stored, and the inspector which is where we make changes. We'll be spending a lot of time in the inspector today. When I go to the library file, there are all these different categories, behaviors which get things to move, filters which change the look of things, generators and particle emitters and all kinds of stuff, but it's the particle emitters that have caught my attention for today. We have over 200 pre-animated, pre-built particle systems that we can use as part of our own projects. And they fall into a variety of categories. We'll just pull this up here so we can see what's going on. We have abstract shapes and designs. We have nature and we've got this neat little feather ball. Feathers floating around, nature clouds. You know, one of the things that's interesting about particle systems, they're really good at replicating nature. Fire, fog, water, smoke, stuff that has sort of amorphous boundaries and, and sort of shades of color can be done really well inside a particle system. We have the ever-popular pyro, which gets stuff to explode and burn. 
And we've got science fiction and smoke. If you haven't had a chance to look through the library and look in the particle emitters, that's a good half hour of just looking and chuckling. There's some great stuff. In my particular case, let's say that we want to use, oh, and uh, let's see, what do I want to do here? We'll just take a nature and let's work with, oh, a simple background. When you click on the background you want, it automatically shows up up here in the preview window. And now we can add it to the timeline. There's two ways that we can add it to the timeline. One with the playhead stopped, or two with the playhead running. There's the playhead, and by default all of our motion projects default to 10 seconds in length. If the playhead is stopped, then whenever you add something, it's always added at the position of the playhead. This is useful when you want an object to be added in the middle of an effect as opposed to the beginning. Or, if the playhead is playing, and you can see it racing across the bottom here, whenever the playhead is playing, whatever you add is always added at the beginning of the timeline. In my particular case, I want to add this at the beginning of the timeline, so I'll hit the spacebar so the playhead is playing. Go up to the preview window here and click the Apply button. The object is always centered in your canvas and starts at the beginning of your timeline.